Welcome back to Network Africa, known for the largest man-made hall on earth. The diamond capital, Kimberley, in South Africa has been plagued by violence following a project aimed to bring illegal miners into the formal fold. The project, a first of its kind in South Africa, was launched 18 months ago in Kimberley, the site of a 19th century diamond rush that lured fortune seekers from the world over Mine owners granted more than 800 unlicensed or informal small-scale miners the right to legally mine around 1,500 acres of diamond-rich waste fields. The aim of the government-backed scheme was to curb illegal mining and black market trade of diamonds and serve as a blueprint for future attempts elsewhere in the country, not only in the diamond sector, but also potentially manganese, gold and chrome. However, the project has been hit by violence, with informal miners not included in the scheme, attacking infrastructure and even members of the newly licensed cooperative. We have literally fired many thousand rounds of rubber bullet shotgun rounds uh, to keep the illegal miners off our property on a regular basis. And our fences are continuously being ripped out, uh, removed or just destroyed. <laughs> The failure thus far of this pilot scheme is a blow to wider corporate and governmental efforts to bring South Africa's estimated tens of thousands of informal miners into the mainstream to boost productivity and curb crime. Ekap and Petra Diamonds, then a part owner of the mine, launched the initiative last year at Kimberley, the Northern Cape province, hoping to address the problem of an influx of Zama Zamas, a Zulu-derived word which loosely translates as keep trying. A total of 836 miners were formed into the Bathop Pele Mining Cooperative and given a license to mine the fields. But a year and a half later, the track record on ground is not promising. But the problem that we, we, we are encountering uh, now, it is from other Zamazamas. Uh -uh, the other Zamazamas, when they come here, uh, because they are not registered, they want to enter this field with, with force. They came here with the weapons, others came here with firearms, others came here with the spade, everything like that. A cap of security teams have been attacked with knives, slingshots, rocks, petrol bombs, and in one instant, a hunting rifle. Ramping up his defences against illegal miners drove a cap of security cost up to around 3 million rand before the project began, and the company is again beefing up security. If there is no resolve, to controlling the illegal activities, which is snowballing into a tremendous threat of sabotage to our operation, the costs will go back up again to the point that we are unable to sustain it. We may be forced to close the company down. As much as six million rands worth of diamonds are taken by illegal miners each month, members of the cooperative who cannot afford formal security are also a target. Campaigners say the ACAPA project woes shows the urgent need for the government to provide clear policy on small scale or artisanal mining using rudimentary techniques. In contrast with other African countries such as Mali, Democratic Republic of Congo and Tanzania, South African law has no provisions for this. The diamonds in the area of Kimberley mined by the cooperative, for example, are expected to run out in about five years. Well, here in Nigeria, the Yobe State Emergency Management Agency is promising to provide relief materials for victims of the Gashua market in by the local government area of the state. The executive secretary of the agency, Mr. Mohamed Goje, says at least 14 shops are raised in the popular potash market and the cause of the fire is still unknown. The incident happened when the traders had retired to their homes and at least 14 shops were raised in the process. Over 3,000 bags of potash were also destroyed. In the night around 3 o'clock, we are told that fire has been engulfing the market. So we came out in masses and informed the fire services. And the fire services has made a lot of encouragement here because from 3 to 10 o'clock they have been here before the fire is to be extinguished. This thing has been happening for a long time, so and we have been calling on them on how to carry out measures that will prevent major occurrence, uh, future occurrence of these uh, problems, because it has been happening, and they are losing a lot of resources. And we want the government to provide a permanent solution, especially tent, that will accommodate 
uh, those potash, about 15 stores so far. And uh, the people uh, benefiting from affected, about 50 of them. A team from the state emergency management agency is inspecting the market and promising to provide relief materials for the victims. There were potash that were sold as much as 5,000 naira per bag. So this is a very big loss to the community. A lot of young men and women, uh, young men and boys are benefiting from this uh, industry, and neighboring communities, neighboring towns have been, have, have, been, have been benefiting. So for us at the State Emergency Management Agency, first our technical team are here yesterday, and we have received call from the National Emergency Management Agency, and I believe they will also be coming here tomorrow. So we'll conduct our assessment as fast as possible. But most interesting is we'll come out with measures that will prevent the occurrence. Prevention is, is, is much better than uh, in, in intervention. This is the third fire incident in the market and the traders want the state government to put measures in place to ensure quick response to fire emergencies in the market. Now here's a story about turning a waste into something more useful. A French entrepreneur recycles the pile of plastic waste that floats in Abidjan's lagoon to build an ecological fun island that the promoters hope is the first of many more to come. And he hopes the innovative concept will spur others to find lucrative ways of reusing the capital city's waste. There's a floating island in the middle of Abidjan's lagoon a place to relax, enjoy a drink, swim and even spend the night. But what makes this Ivorian paradise extra special is that it is artificial, ecological and floats atop 700,000 recycled bottles tightly packed in boxes. It's the brainchild of Eric Becker. The French entrepreneur says he planned to start a business in Côte d'Ivoire in 2012. But when he discovered miles of waste and plastic bottles along the lagoon shores, he decided to help clean up by building a leisure village instead. Although he says there's still more to be done. We pick up bottles and floating waste to build a little on the floating island. But if we wanted to get into waste treatment, we would need to sort the waste. For example, there are plastic bags we don't use and could be used for something. There is biodegradable waste that could be used to make fire or compost, for example, branches. So normally you would need to do more serious work than what we are doing, but all we can do is pick up a part of the waste which we can recycle. The island weighs around 200 tons and is equipped with solar panels for electricity. Decker says he currently receives around 100 guests a week like Inez Noye, who heard about the island and social media platform Instagram. It's really innovative. Ecologically, it was something that was really worth thinking about, and it is a place to be, sometimes. Even because it proves that nothing is wasted, nothing gained, everything can be preserved. So they did something really innovative, and I had to come see for myself up close. While he doesn't think it will change the world, Decker hopes his innovative concept will be a source of inspiration and motivate others to find ways to reuse the city's waste. I have so many questions about that island. Well, we end Network Africa today in the boxing ring. A former French Senegalese boxing professional is offering the country's youth a different path other than migration, which is boxing. Suleiman Mbaye is the founder of Care of Champions, or Home of Champions Academy. Mr. Mbaye says he's looking to train the next generation of boxing champions. On the sidelines of a peaceful forum in Dakar, the French Prime Minister Edouard Philippe and Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian visit the Boxing Academy in Senegal. According to French media, Philippe is said to be a boxing enthusiast and he trains several times a week. So what a treat for him. That'll be all the Network Africa. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani.